Learning to Love Insider Trading. That's the title of a recent piece in the Wall Street Journal. There you see it. And the question is, should insider trading be legalized? And might it be good for markets and the economy and economic growth? Here with us now is that article's author, George Mason University economics professor Donald Boudreaux. And we have convicted stock scammer Sam Antar, who helped mastermind one of the largest securities frauds of its time with his cousin, Eddie Antar. Don Boudreaux, thank you for coming back on. It's been a while. Uh, I, I really enjoyed reading your article. You, you essentially making the case that, that we, shouldn't legal, we, we shouldn't prosecute legal, uh, insider trading, that perhaps we should legalize insider trading because it would be good for stocks and the economy. Could you elaborate? Yeah, what I'm proposing is that insider trading be decriminalized and allow corporations, each individual corporation, to specify what sorts of information can be legally traded upon, which sorts of inside information can be legally traded on, and which sorts can't. I don't want bureaucrats and politicians making those decisions. Don, how would that work? I want to lay this out, and then we'll get Sam's reaction to it. You want the corporations, in particular, it used to be that D&O, directors and officers, could not put out material information that was confidential and when they did they got busted for so-called insider trading now as i understand it the insider trading rules have been gradually expanded 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 down through the years so they can hook almost anybody into it and i i don't say that lightly how would corporations police it if they were left to their own devices well corporations have bylaws and corporations have an incentive to make those bylaws attractive to investors if the if the bylaws are not attractive investors don't invest there, the cost of capital rise. Corporations have an incentive, for example, I think to allow insider trading if the insider knows that fraud is going on in that corporation. And what is that incentive? How does that help the stock market, for example? If the corporation says, if, if, if the corporation pr prohibits trading on knowledge about fraud, then you're an investor. You don't want to invest in that corporation. If it allows insiders to trade on information that say the CEO is engaged in fraud, then it's more attractive for you as an investor to invest in that corporation because you know that insiders there will have an incentive to expose it by trading on it. And that will make the stock price more efficient. That will make the stock price reflect more quickly the fact that something bad is going on in that corporation. I have no doubt that if insider trading were legal, the, the uh, Enron debacle probably would have come to a uh, halt a lot sooner than it did. All right, Sam Antar, you've heard distinguished professor Don Budrow. What is your response? First of all, one small correction. I'm not reformed. I'm forcibly retired. Forcibly retired. Okay, have it your way. What is your response to Don Budrow? It's ridiculous. There's nothing more dangerous than a criminal than an acad academician with these ideas. The issue is disclosure, and you're permitting people to trade on disclosures that's not been disseminated. Tighten up, the disclosure corp tighten up the disclosure requirements for corporations and police them better. We have only 3,500 people at but the SEC. But you want to police it. See, Don yes. is saying the corporations should be able to uh, no, essentially gonna, lay the law down themselves. Do then if you break that law, you bring it. it. You want the SEC to run it. Yes, I want, the, I want it just the way it is. Just the way it is. Don Boudreau, uh, what's your response to that? Well, look, in, you were right earlier, Larry. Insider trading really wasn't illegal until the early 1960s. Mm. All right. It became illegal. Actually, Congress didn't make insider trading illegal. It became illegal when Rule 10B of the 1934 Securities Exchange Act was expanded by the bureaucrats at the SEC uh, in, into making insider trading illegal. Stock markets worked pretty darn well up until the early 1960s. Why would we think that if we got rid of Section 10B-5's interpretation now, which is where insider trading is, is, is prosecuted, why would we think that that would somehow lead to a catastrophe? It didn't lead to a catastrophe before 1960. Sam, I want to ask you this. You have a lot of confidence in the SEC. I don't know why. The SEC is the one that uh, bungled the Madoff investigation. The SEC initially bungled Enron. The SEC has missed every major illegal corporate fraud and scam in the last 10 or 15 years. So why not abolish the SEC? So why do you right? th what, what's so great about the SEC? You have only 3,500 people in the SEC. You have 38,000 people, uh, 38, people in the New York City Police Department. Policing 8 million people. Yeah, 3,500 people. Different. They're 3, not just policing people, white wait, wait, collar fraud. 3,500 people policing the capital markets of the United States, and these are very sophisticated capital markets. We do not have enough resources to effectively police the capital but markets. But if you loosen this insider trading issue, as uh, Don Boudreaux was suggesting, you might not have to police. In other words, 
He's arguing that the stock market prices would give you better information. That right now, he's saying the stock market prices lie because uh, insiders can't Trading trade. Trading on information that hasn't been disseminated to the general public is basically legalizing stealing, and it's wrong. All right, Don, just before we go out, you all are coming back. That's kind of the crux of it, what Sam just said. How do you react to that? It's not if the if the corporation doesn't hold the information as proprietary, it's not stealing. What kind of information would en it was proprietary about Enron's fraud? That's not stealing. All right, hang on. Should insider trading be legalized or at least changed? Donald Boudreau of George Mason University, Sam Antar, former mastermind of the uh, fraud and scam that brought down Crazy Eddie a while back. Donald Boudreau, if if an insider has inf has inside information. Doesn't he or she have an advantage? This is more or less what Sam was saying. Uh, an advantage over everybody else in the stock market. Is that unfair and should it be illegal? I don't think it's unfair at all. They may have an advantage because they, they do know some stuff, but you do want stock markets to be as fair as possible. I agree with that. And I think insider trading is a way to promote that fairness. If insiders can trade on non-proprietary information, they drive those prices more quickly to their correct levels. And that means that the millions of stock traders out there who aren't insiders, they're able to buy and sell at prices that more closely reflect their true values than they would if insider trading is kept uh, prohibited. Sam, what's your reaction that to that? The same logic would have made me a billionaire today in the crazy Eddie fraud. Look, insider trading is not the same thing as fraud. People confuse the two. In fact, insider trading exposes fraud. If, if you're an insider and you know that fraud's going on, you know that the true value of that corporation is not as high as the current stock price reflects. So they're not That's, reporting the crime, they're just profiting off the crime. No, they are reporting it. How they're are they short. reporting it? They're profiting off of it. They're not reporting the crime. They're, they're, getting able to, they're being able to sell the stock before anybody else knows. Exactly. That drives the stock price down. That's ridiculous. Which tells it, it's not ridiculous. It happens. Yes, it is ridiculous. It's, you know what it is? You're saying... In effect, because we can't police people going through stop signs, we should allow people to go through stop signs. Or because I grease a politician with $5,000, we can't police that. We should allow bribery to go forward. No, I, no going through stop signs is bad. Being able to sell uh, uh, stock prices at... Uh, to sell stocks when you know fraud is going on, that, it, that does exactly what's supposed to happen. The stock price falls to expose the fact that the corporation is currently overpriced because fraudulent activity is going on in it. And that tells investors around the world, get out of this corporation. So you're saying that it makes the stock price more efficient it makes and it, reflects the real price. It makes it more Sam, efficient. Sam, what's your reaction to that? Because well, maybe we, we should stop maybe we should stop prosecuting rapists because it's it, well, more efficient and economic, it, it's economically Ra deficient. Rape is a little different than insider trading. I economic think you would agree. Crimes is, but, economic crimes empties your wallet. It's the same kind of rape. But I think what except without to say, I want to get you on this because you have said to this show before, the SEC is a bunch of dumbheads. They won't get it. Maybe he's right. Maybe Make them Don better. is right. Don't get let rid the, of them and don't the decriminalize. Let the stock price reflect it. Make them better. Right, don't we, decriminalize criminal behavior. I got to get out. Donald Budrow, very controversial, very well reasoned. We appreciate your point of view. Sam Antar, 